Today, we're honored to have as our trainer, Mr. Michael Huggins. Just before the announcements, we, we heard the tune, uh, you got to give what you give. You only get what you give. And uh, then that was followed up with the Money Matrix video. At the end of that, Woody Woodruff asks a question, and I hope we take time to ponder this. Would you have made the same choices he did? Every day we're faced with choices and we can, we can sit down, we can blame somebody else, we can uh, throw in the towel, we can give up. But, you know, successful people don't do that. You've got to make the same choices successful people do. And we're looking right now into the eyes of someone on our screen, Michael Huggins, who has made some really good choices in his life and here to help us make good choices in our lives is Mr. Michael Huggins. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Team Elevate, Renatus Nation. Welcome. Good morning. It's Money Monday. I'm glad you guys are all here. Let's start off our week strong. <clears throat> Okay, so Money Monday. This will be fun. Today what I wanted to talk to you about, and then uh, we can expand on it the more we talk about it, is how we are responding to our business. Now, what I mean by that is Got to switch connections. Stand by. What? How are you responding to your business? That's a good question, right? <clears throat> Some people. Is working. <laughs> okay. All right. I wish I could do two things at once. There we go. Okay. How are we responding to our business? Okay, this is, this is a good question to ask ourselves. How are we responding to our business? Because the business is 100% you. It depends on you to drive it forward and to lead by example and to show people to do the right things, how the customers are supposed to behave, how the team members are supposed to behave. How are you responding to your business? <clears throat> I know at the beginning of some people's careers, business is scary. And so people will respond with apprehension. Apprehension. Pretty sure that's how you spell it. Apprehension, and what I'm going to invite you to try on instead of apprehension is anticipation. Now, when you show up in the world and the way you respond is with apprehension versus anticipation, what kind of people do you think you'll start attracting into your world? What kind of people do you think will want to be around you? If you're always apprehensive, aren't you always kind of tiptoeing? You're going to tiptoe everywhere. If you're living with anticipation, then to me, what that means is you already have planned out your future and you know what's coming and you're just really excited, right? It's like you, you approach Christmas with anticipation, right? You, you approach your birthday with anticipation because you're excited about something in the future, so are you approaching your business with anticipation or are you approaching it with apprehension? Tiptoeing, timidity. 
right? You don't want to, you don't want to make someone mad or piss somebody off. So you think that if you tiptoe and you're timid, then you won't make anybody mad. And then if nobody's mad, then your business will grow. But that's not how it works. We gotta disrupt the system. So this future excitement, this anticipation, this is what we're going for. When you wake up in the morning, when you talk to people, when you're headed to appointments, when you're headed to meetings, when you're setting up the meeting, tearing down the meeting, doing your follow-up calls, are you bringing anticipation to all of this or apprehension? Think about if you were to drive down the freeway with apprehension. I think you had, if you had a, a whole day drive ahead of you, you had to drive to Denver from Salt Lake or something like that. I don't know where anyone would get that crazy idea. But let's say you had an eight hour drive ahead of you and these were your two responses. You could pick apprehension or anticipation. Now, if you'd have to drive under apprehension for eight hours, within the first hour, you'd be worn out. You'd be worn out with worry. You'd be worn out with angst. You'd be you know, flexing every muscle and all you had to do is hold the steering wheel, but you'd be so apprehensive about driving that you'd be in the slow lane. You might put your hazard lights on because you, because <laughs> you, you're uh, you're trying to be safe. You're trying to you're trying to avoid any sort of danger or decision, and so you're just going to tiptoe. Well, if you think about that journey, and you take it with anticipation, well, you're gonna you're gonna have a blast. You can't wait to get there, right? Yes, driving there is part of the journey, but also being at your destination and what you need to do there is part of your journey. So if you're taking an anticipation, you anticipate this is going to happen. You're, you're going to have a good time. You anticipate you're going to meet the right people. You anticipate your business is going to grow. You anticipate you're going to have plenty of energy. That's what people want to work with. That's how your business is going to grow. That's how it's going to thrive is meeting the world, meeting life with anticipation, not apprehension. Right? Now you're going to make that drive. You're going to be relaxed. You'll drive with your pinky. Right? You know, the car is designed to drive with your pinky and your big toe. Right? You hit the gas, hit the brakes, and you can steer with your pinky. This is how the, your car was designed to drive almost effortlessly. Right? Maybe if you got a manual transmission, you got to put a little more effort, but automatic. The whole idea is less effort to get the same result. Right. If you're driving with anticipation, you're anticipating growth energy. So what are you bringing to your business? Now, when you're talking to your warm market, right? When you're talking to, uh, when you're doing your follow-ups, Right, your follow-ups, meeting meeting those people. Are you doing that with apprehension? Or are you doing that with anticipation? Right, with apprehension, then you're gonna feel like you're gonna upset people. Well, I don't want to upset you. With anticipation, you know we're creating. That's why it's exciting. Right, when we're talking to our war markets, when we're following up with people, it's something that we're creating. But some people are worried about upsetting. So if you continue to show up in your business and you're responding with apprehension, you are going to push people away. Okay, this is, this is what repels. Or another word, repulsive. This is repulsive. This attracts. or magnetizes, brings to you, it pulls. People want to be around you if, if you're always anticipating the next move. You're anticipating, you approach the future with anticipation versus apprehension. Okay, are you guys being conscious and being aware of the two and what you may or may not be unconsciously doing you might be accidentally bringing apprehension to your business and then wondering why some people don't do what you say why don't these people listen to me 
you might have something good to say, but because of how you are responding, right, how you're showing up, your response may or may not be bringing people to you. So I wanted to talk about this today because we're sitting here on Money Monday. Our week is about to begin. Um, you know, there's a lot of phone calls to be made today. We had a we had a busy week last week. We had many events, and then we had Super Saturday. We had Jay Stark in town, and so we're going to be having a call party later today. And I'm just thinking about some of the IMAs might show up with apprehension. I know plenty will be showing up with anticipation, right? We're anticipating sales. We're anticipating growth and team work and and team expansion. So just thinking about that, how come with the same tools, same training, same resources, same educational service, some are approaching with apprehension and some with anticipation? I think some people are doing that because they don't know that you can switch. Some people think that, um, that this apprehensive way of doing it, they might be thinking as a sign of respect, right? I want to respect this person. So I'm going to be cautious and quiet and I don't want to upset them. <laughs> but really, so, so you think that you are being respectful by being this way. Well, I don't want to upset anybody. So I'll just, I'll just say everything quieter. <laughs> So really what it is, is you're trying to show respect, right? This is, what, this is where it's coming from. You're not purposefully sabotaging your business. Where is it coming from? You want to be a respectful person. You want to be respected. And so a while ago, you linked up this kind of action to being respectful. To a degree, yeah, but, and when I say but, that's on purpose. I can see how someone might misinterpret that as being respectful, but it's not. It really, it really, like we talked about, it repels. <clears throat> if we really want to show people that we respect them and that we respect their time and we respect their thoughts and we respect who they are, then we have to bring winning energy. This will not work. We have to bring winning energy. We have to come over here. We're anticipating a better future. We're anticipating a better life. We're anticipating success. We're anticipating growth. So if you really want to bring respect to a, a conversation or to a relationship, then anticipate that, that person's growth. Anticipate that person's future. Anticipate that person's ability to respond in a better, more powerful way. When we look at it and we get to pick our response, right? That's good news. We get to pick. This is a choice. How are we responding? Right? This is nice. We get to choose. I'm going to recommend that we do it with anticipation. Okay. So that also means when we're building for events, we're going to bring this anticipation into a world of building for events. So if you guys remember our funnel, find the people, tell a story, build for events, and follow up. <clears throat> These are our money-making activities. This is all we got to stick with. So if we're bringing this especially, especially to building for events, when you're bringing that anticipation, it's around building for events. So here in Denver, we're, we are, the next event we're building for is Jeff Armstrong on June 30th. So June 30th, we've got Jeff Armstrong in town. And he's going to be covering how to be a note broker, how to be a note buyer, how to be a note holder, how to be a note seller, how to be a note creator. It's all around notes. 
right now to buy them, hold them, flip them, create them. This is what it's going to be on. <clears throat> now, why is this such an important topic, this strategy of notes? Well, it comes back to anticipation or apprehension, right? Again, the, the evidence of what's to come is pretty clear. What is coming is pretty clear to me. Now, the reason I say that is, again, this is, this is all guesswork because we don't have crystal balls. We can't tell. It's all guesswork. But here's, here's what I'm thinking, and this is why I can bring such excitement and anticipation to what's going on and not apprehension. In the, let's, let's say... Um, in the wonderful world of residential real estate, when we have a cycle of price fluctuation, and we're looking at from a peak to a peak, so from a peak up right here, right here, right, this spot to this spot is about 10 to 15 years, right? Same as down here, a peak down to a peak down, same thing. 10 to 15 years, okay? So we have these cycles. <clears throat> now, commercial real estate, right, it's got businesses, we're talking about apartment buildings, right? The commercial real estate has its own cycle. And this is good news it still has its own peaks and valleys, right? Still has its own from here to here, right? 10 to 15 years. Same thing up here, okay? <clears throat> so this is what's exciting because now with Renatus and with our education, we don't have to worry about we don't have to approach real estate apprehensively because no matter what we're working on, whether it's residential or whether it's commercial, guess what? There's always an up. There's something always up. So if your only business is fix and flips on residential property and then it goes down, you're going to have a 5, 10, 15 year down. You got to be able to respond to the market. How are you responding? Okay, again, this is, this is coming down to responsibility. One of our favorite words. So how are you gonna respond to the fluctuations of the market? Apprehensively or with anticipation? Getting ex excited about the future. Okay, so commercial real estate is gonna be exciting. <clears throat> and banks will flip-flop between who they like to lend to. They like to lend to residential, then they want to lend on commercial, then they want to lend back on residential. It's, it's going to be a thing. Okay. <clears throat> but what's exciting is seller finance notes, the note game, notes, paper. Got to get that paper, paper. Notes has its own cycle. So... When, real, when residential real estate, think about this, something you have to understand. Right now, residential real estate, if interest rates are at 4% for interest, then that means someone making $50,000 a year should responsibly and reasonably buy up to a $200,000 house. That's it. And that's even a little, that's even a little pushing it. 200,000 on 50, that's four times. Responsibly is three times, but let's just say four 
because that's what we're dealing with right now. Now, Denver, it's even crazier. Someone on $50,000 a year is buying a $400,000 house. This is going to be ridiculous. So what is this? What, what's going to happen is this person's income is pretty much going to stay the same for the next five years, right? It might go up to 52, 54, 55,000. But if interest rates go up, not if, when, they're going up. When interest rates go up, let's say they go up to 7%, then this $50,000 a year income will all of a sudden only be able to buy a $150,000 house. Now they made the same income, right? They're still at 50,000, but now because of interest rates on residential real estate lending programs, the same amount of income buys less house. So now this creates a problem or an opportunity, depending on how you look at it, apprehensively or with anticipation. This creates an opportunity or a problem. Let's look at it. This person, this person uh, selling the house, the seller of the house, seller of the property has a problem. Let's say he owes uh, 175 on it. If he owes 175 and his strategy was he's going to sell the house at 200,000 because interest rates are at 4%. So people earning 50,000 a year could buy it from me. That was his plan. Well, because interest rates change, that's no longer going to work. So now all the people who are coming up trying to buy the house can only pay 150 for it, but he still wants 200. He wants 200, but they can only pay 150 because of their income and the interest rate. So what's gonna happen is this seller is gonna create a note and is gonna carry back 50,000 because he still wants to make money. So now he's gonna get his 200,000, but, but this homeowner is only gonna be able to borrow from the bank 150, so the seller is gonna to have to make up the difference. Now when the seller does that, now the seller is settling for monthly payments. He didn't want that. He wanted a lump sum up front, but that's what he gets now. He gets a monthly payment on $50,000. <clears throat> so what's going to happen is this, the interest rates going up right here, going up seven, eight, nine, ten. Who knows when they're going to stop? It doesn't really matter because we're creative with our real estate can always make income. But the more these interest rates go up, the less house a $50,000 income will buy or, or whatever income will buy. So now this, this right here, the seller finance note that got created has value to it. So do you see these notes and their creation going up or down in the next 10 years? You see seller finance notes being created more or less in the next 10 years. Well, it's easy to see that if seller finance notes are related to interest rates going up, let me ask you this then, do you see interest rates going up or down for the next five to 10 years? So there's a chain reaction and this spells opportunity right here. But when some people see this switch, they're going from four to 7%, and then they see house buyers being able to buy less, they see that as a problem, and they're gonna approach the future with apprehension, right? This is where we can pick anticipation, and we can respond effectively, or we can be apprehensive. Right here, interest rates are going up, we don't need to worry. We don't need to dread or freak out. We need to get educated. We need to make a plan. We need to make a strategy. So in the seller finance world, it kind of does its own thing. Okay, with the notes in the paper market, when real estate's going up, it's kind of just whatever. But then 
it's on its own cycle. And it never really drops, it just kind of gets quiet. So we've got these new peaks up here. So again, with our highlight, we basically have a place we can work and stay productive. It just depends on what we're doing. Are we doing commercial? Are we doing residential? Are we doing paper? There's always a way to stay productive. But if you only have one business, then you got to ride the wave. And you got to stay in the down when everyone's down and stay in the up when everyone's up. But if you can do residential notes and commercial, which Renatus teaches on all of them, then over the next five to 10 years, your response Remember we're talking about responsibility? Your response to the market, your response to fluctuations is going to be anticipation. And anticipation, clarity, excitement. So if you have that excitement, guess what? You will be attractive. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to attract attractive people. You will be attractive. This is what I'm saying. <clears throat> so how are you responding to your business? How are you responding to the market? I think by the end of the month, if we keep talking about anticipation and apprehension, you might see a difference. <laughs> Just kidding. Do you guys see a difference? You see a difference in anticipation versus apprehension? So the reason why I'm telling you this is because, well, I'm sure you're getting some of the reasons, but another one of the reasons is because we have the workshop coming up. So this is, this is it depends on your language, right? Right now, if you go out into the world and you try to market notes and, and, you're, you, and you're neglecting the fact that the market's going to change. All people see right now is the market's up. The market's up. It's exciting. The market's up. So let's just go do some fix and flips. So if you say, hey, well, let's go do some notes, they're like, hell no, man. I could go do a fix and flip and make 50 grand. That's what's happening right now. That's the mentality. But it's about to switch. So we can bring in some clarity. We can bring in some excitement around it switching. You know, I ask people, hey, how long is an up cycle in this industry? If, so, if they say, I don't know, then you say, holy shit, you need to come to my class. You're out here in the market not knowing about cycles. But most people who are in the game and making money understand it's a 10 to 15 year cycle. They get it. So it's an easy question after that. Well, what are you doing to prepare for the down? What are you doing to prepare for the correction? What is your business going to do when interest rates go up and home buyers can buy less because of interest rates? How are you going to thrive in that environment? Right? Start asking people that question. How are you going to thrive in an environment where interest rates go up and people can buy less house from you? And your business Right now, if it's a fix and flip business, only works because prices keep going up. So how's it going to thrive when prices go down or interest rates go up? It's not. That kind of business model doesn't thrive in that environment. So if you want to thrive, it's time to learn another skill. It's time to learn notes. Okay. Now, the difference, there's a big difference. This is like being the bank. If you were to go use U.S. Bank or Chase Bank or whatever, you go to a bank and they give you money so that you can go buy a house. Regardless of the house having a renter in it or not, you still owe this money back to the bank. You still have to pay them whether you have a renter or not. So maybe you have a bunch of rental properties. Think about it this way. This is another way to talk to people with rental properties about our opportunity. Let's say they have a bunch of rentals. This is them right now. They have five properties, let's say. <clears throat> and maybe they own it free and clear, maybe they have a bank, doesn't really matter. 
But the mindset, the perspective or the mindset, think about it this way. If you're talking to the real estate investor that is going to be the landlord, you know, or going to be the property manager, you know, you know he's going to, he's going to be the property owner. That's the thing. And he's got to go put happy little families in here and then go collect his paychecks. Okay. <clears throat> now let's say this one, uh, they're not paying their rent. Let's say this one, um, they just left in the middle of the night and abandoned the property. And let's say this one, they accidentally caused a lot of damage to the property. So now these three are not performing in your world as the landlord. Does the bank care about the individual situations around these properties? No, they don't. They say, pay me. You don't got to like me. You just got to pay me. So you as the landlord, now you got to go fix these problems. You got to go fix, fix, fix. Let's say there's, there's a, you got an issue with tenants here. You got an issue with termites here. You got an issue with taxes over here. You got an issue with toilets over here. Now you got all these issues. Again, the bank doesn't care. <clears throat> well, what if you took on the mindset of the bank? If you decided I'm going to adopt a new mindset and instead of landlord, I'm going to think bank. Then what you'll do is as the landlord, you will sell on seller financing. And you will become the bank. Now, if you sell on seller financing to this guy, now his job and maybe he's got tons of energy, tons of excitement, tons of experience. It is now his job to take care of these properties. And whether they're performing or not, your relationship to him is pay me. You don't got to like me. You just got to pay me. You can like me if you want. That's okay too. But regardless of whether you like me or not, you still have to pay me. That's how the bank says, that's how the bank feels. So in order to switch this mindset switch of going from landlord to bank, right? This switch of going from landlord to bank takes training, takes skill set, takes some legal understanding, some tax understanding. It takes some uh, finance understanding, running numbers. It takes banking understanding. This is a very complex and sophisticated strategy but now is this person that i've circled here this person the person who switched from landlord to bank is he protected is he in a better income position is this in income stronger or weaker because he switched from landlord to bank his income is stronger his income is now no longer dependent upon him putting in renters, upon him fixing the toilet, upon him, you know, taking care of the termites. His income is now based off of paper or based off of notes that were created. These notes are what say, you got to pay me. So we're here to help people who have spent the last five, 10 years building up a gigantic portfolio. They got all these properties and now they want to reap the benefits. Well, they need to switch from landlord to bank. They switch from landlord to bank. They're going to get different kinds of income. It's going to be taxed less. And guess what? The, one of the major keys that you get? Freedom. You get free time as a bank. You get free time as a note holder. You don't have to go fix the toilet. <laughs> this is great and if this guy doesn't pay you in the paperwork right if this guy doesn't pay you the new person who just bought from you if he doesn't pay you then you foreclose you take it all back and then you sell it again on paper so you are in control you have free time which everyone's 
going for, and you have control. You pay less taxes, you have more control and more free time if you're the note holder. So this is where we want to train. We want to introduce people out in the world to Jeff Armstrong and his strategies and his trainings because he's going to give people more control, more free time, and make sure that their income is consistent. Consistent income. Isn't that what we're all after? So you, if you don't have any properties right now, then your new mission, your new goal is to bring this value to people that do have properties, even if they have one. Some have 20, some have 50. You got to get to know them. You got to be able to, I just, oh, I just totally thought of someone I need to call. Nice. Hold on, let me make a note. Making a note. Who do I need to call? It just made me think of, I just met a guy a couple months ago. That's got like 25 properties and he's old as crap. And uh, I know he would definitely love to come to this workshop and sell on seller financing. He might even sell to me. All right, cool. Okie dokie. Oh, we got some, got some comments, got some chats. What's going on here? Chatty chat, chat. Charlene. I'm excited to bring Jeff. Thanks for bringing him out. I wanted to learn notes because he said he'll personally do the first deal with anyone. Is he training? Is this training going to be streamed? Um, no, this training is not going to be streamed. Good question. Basilo. Um, <clears throat> no, but the good news is you have your classes. If you don't have your combo, then I guess you don't have it. Um, we, sometimes you got to make your own events. Yes, we're going to work hard. We're going to bring an instructor into our office so that we can have an incredible event. But everything I said is still pending. Everything I said is still like on the... It, it's about to switch. So since it's still true, you just need to bring this information to your peeps, to your prospects, to your warm market, to your friends. Say, hey, come over to my house and we're going to learn about notes. We need to learn about notes because the appreciating residential market isn't going to last forever. And we need to have other tools. All right? Just think about strategies as equipment. Think about strategies like tools, if you were an artist, you need many colors, you need many brushes, you need many surfaces, you need ways to clean, You're, you know, you, you, you gotta have all these tools so you can paint a picture. Same thing here in Renatus, same thing with real estate, you gotta be able to know residential, commercial, and paper. These are all just different tools of the trade, right? A hammer doesn't do what a saw does, a screwdriver doesn't do what a drill does. Right? It's scissors don't do what a hammer does. So you got to have different tools for different jobs. So being able to do notes is just another tool. Okay. Right. And because he's since so few people do notes out in the world, he's ready to just do notes with us. But you have to take the class. Do it 100% the way he says do it. Then he'll do deals with you. And perfect, you got your combo. So it's time to start hosting events. Host some events at your house. Host some events at your office nearby, at a hotel, at a coffee shop. Probably not a coffee shop because you want to be able to play some class and introduce people to the education. So um, if you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, coffee shop, perfect. If you're doing multiple, then your house, their house. Even the lobby of like a fancy hotel, super easy. Um, shared workspace, you know, you rent out a conference room, 20, 50 bucks an hour. That's easy. And put people in there and show them the class, show them what you're doing. And then politely with the biggest grin, ask them to buy because they'd be an idiot not to buy. So find the people, tell the story, build for events, follow up. 
That's what we need to do every day. Every day, every day, every day, every day. So we go to the gym every day, but we don't work on, on back every day. We still go to the gym every day. So what I'm saying is sometimes some of the days when you're building for events and you're working, if the, it's find the people, tell the story, build for events, and follow up. It means these rotate. Okay. You don't just find the people, find the people, find the people, find the people. It doesn't work. You find the people, tell a story, build for events, follow up. <clears throat> so if you're going to build a schedule over this next week, and you're going to spend a lot of time on finding the people and telling the story about this event, and then building for the event itself, that's great. But if you stay right here, and then by the time the next event comes around, then you're just going to go find the people, tell a story, build for events. And then you're going to go find the people, tell a story, build for events. And you're going to go find the people, tell a story, build for events. Don't do that. Don't trap yourself into a, a overloaded work schedule of just these things. You need to make space and time to do follow-ups. Okay, each follow-up, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, budget 60 to 90 minutes. You're going to spend 30 minutes answering questions and then 30 minutes finding the money and entering an order. That's all it takes. Okay, if someone has two hours of questions, then you're answering questions that aren't moving the sale forward. So just a quick distinction, in your follow-ups, there's going to be two types of questions that your customers are going to ask. There's going to be training questions, and there's going to be decision questions. These are questions they need answered to make a decision versus the questions they're answer, asking on how to get training. How, how does a short sale work? If you're at the follow-up, you're meeting your person at your house, at your office, at their house, their office, you know, whatever, coffee shop, whatever. And they ask you, what's a short sale? Spend 30 seconds on it, maybe, because that's a training question. If they say, well, how does, how does velocity banking work? Well, how does this work? How does that work? Okay, those are training questions. You could spend hours and hours and hours on training questions. But what we want you to say is, you know what? Call it out. That's a training question. So all the questions you have regarding training are in the training. I'm here to answer your questions around decisions. What are the questions do you need answered so that you can make a decision about the training? But I didn't take this follow-up so I could do training over coffee. That's not how this works. I'm here to collect decisions and get you into the training. So what other questions do you have that will help you decide? And if they ask another training question, you say, that's a training question. What about decision questions? And you know what? They have way less. I'm getting closer because I want you to understand this. They have way less decision questions. So if you just stick to that and you make sure that this is your policy with follow-ups, only decision questions. You have way more follow-ups. You have way more fun. And you make way more money. And those people will respect you. But if you try to do answer all the training questions, right? What are seller finance notes? A 30 second overview. That's it. If you try to get into the training and here's how you market for it and make sure you get the interest rate here and you get the days here. And if you say something wrong, there's just so much liability and obligation in the training world. You're not a trainer, you're a marketer. Marketers collect decisions. But if you're trying to do training and you try to impress people with your giant brain and you do some training and then you don't say it right or it doesn't come out correctly, then you just might cost yourself a sale that way. So there's more risk in answering training questions. If you don't answer it to their liking, then now you look like an idiot. Now they have a reason to not buy from you. So make sure in your follow-ups you're answering decision-making questions and make sure in your schedule that you are creating a space on your week to consistently do all four money-making activities, not just the first three. Okay. That's gonna, that right there, if you just stick to that, what I just showed you right there, you double your income and triple your time off. The other idea is about getting time off, getting free time, getting flexibility. If you're training, Trying to train and follow-ups, you will have no free time.
You might make some money, but you won't have any free time. So stick to that, okay? It's a format there. All right, what would be your pitch to invite someone to Jeff's event? Well, um, it kind of depends. If I don't really know much about them, then I'll, it'll be pretty generic, but it'll be like, hey, have you ever thought about becoming a bank in real estate? Have you ever realized that banks have the strongest position? Did you know? I like the, did you know? Did you know? No, you could be a bank. Did you know that you could secure your cash flow? Did you know you could almost guarantee your cash flow on your rental properties? Did you know? So start with some did you knows. And then let them know, hey, we or I am hosting. Remember, if you're in, your, in my office, if you're in anyone's office helping running events, you are also a host. So don't say they are hosting. Say I am hosting. I am hosting a training. I am hosting a workshop where we're flying in one of my mentors who's the third largest note buyer in the country. He's going to show us not only how to buy notes, but also how to create notes, how to broker notes, how to hold notes. Now, what's a note? A note is simply a payment arrangement. So when you go get your mortgage, you created a note. Well, here's the thing. If you're trying to get rental income, cash flowing from residential properties, if you're the note holder, your cash is guaranteed. So here's what our training is gonna be on. No more taxes, tenants, termites, and toilets. Do you want cash flow from real estate without taxes, tenants, toilets, and termites? Then you need to get into notes, seller finance notes. You need to know how to hold them, buy them, sell them, create them. We're doing a one day workshop it's all day. It's exclusive, limited seating. It's 50 bucks. Okay. It includes a lunch. It'll be at my office in Cherry Creek. And what we're going to do is cover what a note is, how to buy them, how to hold them, how to convert your properties into notes. If you already have something to work with and then how to do your first deal, how to, how to make some money with it. Even if you don't have money, it's by invitation only. It's not open to the public. Is there anything you're doing Saturday, June 30th that you can't get out of? Are you doing anything on that Saturday, June 30th that you can't get out of? It's done by 4.30, so if you still need to take care of some stuff, you still got some time on Saturday, All right? But we're going to do 9 to 4.30. We're going to have an incredible lunch. Is there anything you're doing June 30th that you can't get out of? Well, perfect. I'll put you down as my guest. It's 50 bucks right now to pre-register. Right, early bird special, or it's seventy-five bucks at the door. Let's get you registered now, um, and then and then bring in some anticipation. Oh gosh, I'm so excited to introduce you to Jeff. Man, I took his class last month, six months ago, last year, or I've yet to take his class, but I've heard some great things, and I'm really excited to meet him, and I'm excited for you to meet him. You bring that kind of energy to it. All right, guys, top of the hour. I got to hop on my next call. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, we started out with my question, how are you responding to your business? Okay, review this if you need to. Send the link to your IMAs that you know missed it. And let's work hard. Stay focused. It's Money Monday. Life is in your hands. You know what to do. Go get it. All right, guys, have a great day. Talk to you soon.